congratulations. February 2023, you received a special honor for your life's work, the Schallwelle, the German award for electronic music. We would like to take this award as an opportunity to talk about your work as a mastering engineer. Eric, you are best known as a musician. You were the drummer and founding member of the cult band Grobschnitt, and with the song Wolkenreise, you had a huge hit as a solo artist. The band Grobschnitt is currently also highly topical again. Hagen, the hometown of the band, held an exhibition in their honor. How does it feel that after all this time, so many people love and celebrate Grobschnitt's music? Since back then we worked very intense for the audience, it's not a big surprise, it still pays back. Grobschnitt was always known for close contact with fans. After our shows, we always were there. Shaking hands, signing autographs, answering all kinds of questions in front of the stage. In the early years, we played in each and every tiny location throughout the country, taking our music to the people in the province. And later, when we got bigger and played the bigger places, they all came back down to see us there and the halls and venues were bursting. As uh, the band of the people we always uh, try to be, the people now are growing old with us and the past is still unforgotten on both sides. And we're also still working hard on our legacy. Some of the old members are on tour again with an acoustic project, while I myself am busy behind the curtains together with our guitarist and manager Lupo in presenting treasures from the past on CD, vinyl and also videos. But you have also been an internationally recognized audio mastering engineer for a long time and have your own music studio, The Mastering Ranch. You've been using CubeTech VPIs and the AudioCube workstation in your productions for so many years, so it's also super interesting to hear about your experiences. How and when did it come to this step that you went into audio mastering beside and after your music career? That's not quite correct. It started out very early at the age of seven with my audio experience when my mother gave me her big old wealth radio. First, it was only looking deep inside and tinkering around with it. But at the age of 10, I already possessed a turntable. My room was filled up with speakers in each and every corner. And later, in 1965, I got my first two tape recorders. So since then, I was able to invent things like tape copies, the phasing effect, or even recording stereo with two mono decks. So you can say my love for radio and audio and related technologies started long before we established our first band in 1966. And it always was present besides our music. I uh, recorded our gigs, repaired and set up our gear I was married to the soldering iron and screwdriver, so to speak. And um, when it came up to recording our first album in Hamburg in 1971, I became the right hand and ear of our producer and engineer, Connie Planck. And from then on, I assisted all studio productions and later recorded and mixed many of the Dropshoot albums myself. After I left Gropschnitt in 1983, I concentrated in producing and engineering for many years in our studios in Dortmund and Hagen. Then in 1998, I decided to set up my mastering ranch at home out in the countryside because audio technology developed more into PC-based tools. There it wasn't possible anymore to record big acts, but I concentrated on mixing and mastering because also the CD market had grown and there were big needs for quality reissues. One of my lucky stars back then was uh, Repertoire Records, a special reissue label from Hamburg and London who grabbed me for their productions. There has been a huge trend in audio back to analog, Vinyls have quite high sales numbers again. What do you think about this development? 
One of my oldest friends and colleagues in the business, uh, Reinhold Mack, always says, there's nothing sounding better than a half inch stereo tape played on 30 inches on a Studer machine. Well, <laughs> what should I say? I still have a Studer and Revox machines and thousands of tapes, as well as a pro turntable and the best REAA preamp worldwide and anything analog. So analog is still a big deal here. But the problem always was how to get that sound to the consumers. And it still is, maybe bigger than ever. Vinyls are looking great, but they're not the best media for carrying sound. We all were delighted when the CD came up in the 80s with extended running time, no rumbling, no crackling, no distortions. But the fact is, whipping the sound correctly out of a vinyl might cost you thousands of bucks more than getting it one-to-one -one out of a simple CD. In the 80s, uh, vinyl was pushed to its best by people with huge experience and gear. Today, we have a vinyl comeback, mainly forced by the consumers who need something nice looking and uh, turning around. But uh, since most of the old engineers are gone, a lot of the experience in cutting real great vinyl has vanished. Today, Sometimes I'm more than disappointed when delivering a good sounding master to the artists and companies and then they get back to me asking, um, why does it sound so weak on the final vinyl? Then I compare it to a perfect cut it vinyl from the 80s and then I know why. I could write a book about it, but uh, mastering is more fun. <laughs> You're an AudioCube and VPI user from the very beginning and still use the CubeTech VPIs and AudioCube as your main mastering toolset. What characterizes them in your experience? And what are the benefits for remasterings? As a worker, you need tools. To chisel something, it needs a hammer. To repair, it needs a screwdriver and so on. And uh, the rest is done by your own skills. So, if you have uh, the right tool and are used to it, you'll work on for the rest of your life with it and always get the best results. When I was introduced to CubeTech, uh, called HDA back then in 1999, I found out uh, their tools were doing exactly what I was used to after decades working in analog studios. So, I um, started out with them and still am mostly satisfied after 25 years now. If the analog EQ from uh, CubeTech works perfect, I don't need a new one with different design each year. <laughs> we know since decades the requirements of perfect EQing in the analog field. And CubeTech's EQ, for instance, did it exactly from the beginning. So um, it will be my perfect hammer forever. It seems to me um, some companies are changing their products all the time only to present a new design on the next F exhibition. And, uh, well, there's no use to follow this. Do you have any of the CubeTech VPIs that you particularly love? And if so, what makes them so special? Besides the mentioned uh, analog EQ from CubeTech, a true sensation was their azimuth character, as well as the spectral dehiss repair filter, uh, declicker and decrackler, allowing audio treatments we only have dreamt of in the 60s and 70s. Especially the um, azimuth corrector is, was a true revelation. Um, since back then, nobody seemed to care about correct adjusted tape heads, especially in England. There were and are countless CD reissues showing heavy face errors. And um, these I can repair digital with that great tool since more than 25 years now. There was such an unbelievable amount of crap released in the first years of the CD boom. Digital tools like that were more than necessary. I remember a remastering job for a CD from a famous British act 
from a German company, a name label, who told me to polish up the sound a bit. When I checked the CD, I was shocked. It was completely face reverse. You couldn't hear anything. When switching to mono, the complete music was gone. I called up the boss of the company and told him, and he said, well, I've never heard about that incident. We have sold several thousand CDs of this one, and we didn't have one single complaint. Okay, so much about the consumers out there. Are there any masterings and remasterings that you are feeling especially proud of? I'm eating my heart out on each and every job here. And meanwhile, uh, they add up to about 2,500 productions since 1999. So um, what are we doing right here, right now? Let me see. Uh, Steamhammer, um, Coliseum, uh, Maggie Bell with Stone the Crows, and a lot more are presently on my table. I love them all, and um, the greatest award for me is when the old musicians show up here praising my work. <laughs> Meanwhile, a lot of uh, stars uh, from back then, which were my heroes in my youth, uh, are friends of mine today. But yeah, a few examples are really outstanding. Um, my personal best remastering I ever did was a track by the Yardbirds. It's called Dazed and Confused, and uh, some of you might recognize Dazed and Confused is a title from Led Zeppelin. But in um, 1968, the Yardbirds, with Jimmy Page as guitarist, developed into Led Zeppelin, and Jimmy Page forced Dazed and Confused to do with this band. And uh, it was um, played in a show at the BBC live and was released on CD for the first time in 2011 and was sounding unbelievable weird. It was true crap. Well, and since I have remastered everything from the Yardbirds during the past years, I tried to repair this track. It was a huge challenge. It took me about two years to uh, restore each single tone and accent by ear and by hand. But the result now satisfies at least myself and the Yardbirds. I'm dazed and confused as it straight as it goes. I'm not being used, I'm just like you know. Give me a clue as to where I am at. I feel like a mouse and you act like a cat. I'm dazed and confused as it stay as it go. Am I being used? I just like to know. Give me a clue as to where I am at. I feel like a mouse and you act like a cat. Another challenge was a 14-CD um, box uh, for Barbara Thompson for Repertoire Records, showing her appearance at the BBC throughout uh, the decades. One concert was um, recorded by a fan at his radio at home, the only existing source. Mm, the problem, he had weak stereo reception and his neighbor <laughs> was mowing his lawn or something like that, Horrible hiss and thousands of cracklings throughout the whole 45 minutes of the show. And um, since I had worked for Barbara and also for her husband, John Heisman, and his Colosseum projects before, I decided to repair this show the best possible way. Well, of course, um, these great Cubic tools like Declicker and Decracker helped a lot but it's always necessary to check each single spot carefully again and polish it uh, by hand. It took me about six weeks to get rid of all the crap and developed into something like a challenging hobby because uh, nobody will pay for that. 
But now this awesome document became a true listening pleasure. Would you like to listen? Here it is. And some minor changes to that now. Don plays clarinet. Barbara is on concert flute. Matt Matheson goes back to the electric piano for something tranquil by Don called Pipes of Peace. <laughs> And some minor changes to that now. Don plays clarinet. Barbara is on concert flute. Matt Matthewson goes back to the electric piano for something tranquil by Don called Pipes of Peace. <laughs> What are your plans for the future? Is there a production that is still on your wish list to remaster? Well, there are some productions on my personal wish list I would love to remaster. And also uh, many friends and fans are calling me up and telling, well, you should remaster this one and that one. Why don't you do the Pink Floyd album or the Rolling Stones again? Well, I can't work on productions which are not uh, officially passed to me from companies or the artists themselves and uh, on the other side um, I'm doing no promotion for my job and I, I don't have time for that but um, honestly said well I did remaster some very famous acts personally for me and close friends and uh, I was surprised how much I could whip out of these world productions in the end. So, uh, well, maybe somebody must dare to jump over his own shadow, use the best of tools like uh, VPIs from CubeTech and his own long experience and sit down thinking uh, we're not only in it for the money, we're in it for the music and the feeling and the things the artist wants to take over to the people and then remaster from a, from a human kind of feeling. Okay?